So hip replacement is a very successful operation for the majority of patients. By three months, most patients can return to their normal activities and have almost forgotten that they've had the surgery performed. In the long term, the success is equally good. At 10 years, more than 90% of patients can expect to still have a successfully functioning hip replacement. And even at 20 years, up to 80% of patients can still have a successfully functioning hip replacement as well. So the most common reason for a hip replacement to fail is for what's called loosening. When a hip replacement is performed initially, the, the components of the hip replacement are securely fixed into the bone. However, over a long period of time, these components can start to come loose and this can cause pain for the patient. The reason this loosening occurs is that the bearing of the joint, the ball and the socket, can start to wear out over a period of time. And this can release microscopic amounts of particles that can cause an inflammatory reaction at the bone. And this damages the bone and can cause these components to come loose. If that becomes severe enough, and the pain bad enough, then some patients will require revision surgery to replace the worn out hip replacement. The second most common cause for failure of a hip replacement is dislocation. This is where the ball jumps out of the socket. If this happens, the leg is shortened, the patient is in a lot of pain and they're unable to bear weight. They often have to be transported to hospital in an ambulance and have an anaesthetic to allow the hip to be manipulated back into place. The highest risk for this is in the first few months after the surgery, whilst the deeper tissues start to heal up. After this period, the risk of dislocation reduces. Over a long period of time, the risk of dislocation can then increase again, and this can be because either the components are wearing out, or the patient's muscles have become weaker or less coordinated. If a hip replacement dislocates probably more than three times, then it's likely to keep happening. And in this, inst in this case, patients may well require revision surgery to try and correct this or prevent this from happening again. Perhaps the third most common and most devastating cause for a failure of a hip replacement is if a deep infection occurs around the prosthesis. If microorganisms settle on the prosthesis and multiply, then deep infection can occur. The period when this is at most risk is during the actual surgery itself. So great precautions are taken to try and prevent this. This can mean minimising any medical problems in patients before the surgery, taking great care during the surgery, and giving the patient antibiotics at the time of surgery. In the UK, joint replacement surgery is also performed in ultra clean air operating theatres to try and minimise this risk. However, if it does happen and deep infection occurs, then it can be very difficult to eradicate without further surgery. This surgery usually entails removing the existing prostheses and then implanting further prostheses. Sometimes this is, requires more than one operation. So there are less common causes of failure of hip replacement. These can include fracture of the bone around the prosthesis or even a fracture of the prosthesis itself. These usually occur many years down the line, secondary to wearing of the prosthesis. Another cause of failure that's occurred in the last few years is failure of metal on metal hip, on hip replacements. Quite a large number of these were implanted in the United Kingdom between about 2000 and 2010. The metal ions that are released from the prosthesis can cause an, an extreme inflammatory reaction in some patients, which causes damage to the tissues around the hip or even the bone itself. If this has occurred, then surgery to remove the metal or metal prosthesis and insert a different form of prosthesis is almost always required. So revision hip surgery uh, is still very successful for most patients, but the surgery can range from a, a fairly small procedure similar to a, an initial hip replacement to a very major procedure requiring extensive reconstruction. So the most important thing is to try and minimise the risk of, of needing revision. There are key things that can contribute to minimising the risk of re revision hip surgery. The first is to use implants that have got a, a proven track record uh, of, of long-term success. The second most important thing really is to ensure that the prosthesis is as, as, as accurately placed as possible. And to achieve this, it's recognised that surgeons who perform, the, uh, perform hip replacement regularly are more likely to be able to achieve this.